Are you looking for inspiration for quick and easy holiday gift tags? Then keep watching. Hello there, Michelle Short here with Terrific Tags with Michelle. Today I'm sharing quick and easy holiday gift tags with you using traditional and non-traditional colours. So let's get started. I have started off by die cutting four of the medium sized terrific tag dies from Classic Crest 110 pound solar white cardstock. I'm then going to emboss them using the Pine Forest 3D embossing folder. This is such a pretty embossing folder. This works perfectly for cards, but it also works really nicely for tags as well. I do want to make sure that I don't get the tree stumps in this tag because I didn't think it would kind of look right um, for the look I was going for. So I'm just making sure that it's quite high up and also that there's a gap at the top so that I can stamp a sentiment. I've run that through my die cutting machine and I've got really pretty snowy trees is what it looks like here at the moment. But I do want to add some color onto them. So I'm using some low tack tape, removable tape, and I'm just placing that down onto a scrap piece of paper. And then I'm taking the Pine Forest Simple Coloring Stencil Set. This is such a cool set because you get all of the different layers to color in the trees, but you also get masks as well. I'm not using those today, but I did want to show you them because I think that's really cool for lots of different techniques. There are different stencils for different layers of the trees. So I'm taking the first one, which is the layer right at the back. And again, I don't want those tree stumps to be in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the bottom of the tag and then I'm gonna pop the stencil behind. I'm then gonna hold that stencil down with some satin masking tape. So then I can ink blend on top. And I'm using the Frosted Foliage Fresh Dye Ink Set. There is an extra one in the set. I'm just using the three darkest today. So I'm starting off with the jade color and these are the full size ink pads, the new round ones. They're really lovely. And what I like in particular about these inks is they've got quite a high viscosity to them. So actually you get quite a lot of color coverage really quite quickly. So you don't have to add too many layers on if you didn't want to. But I am just going lightly. I do tend to ink blend quite lightly to start with and then build up the colour in layers. And I'm using a small ink blending tool. I am making sure to go all the way to the bottom of that tag. Most of it is going to get covered up, but you can see little kind of peaks through. And so I want to make sure that everything is covered towards the bottom of that tag. I'm then bringing in the second stencil. And because some of it is already covered up with ink, it did take me a little while just to get this one in place. Because I have done that embossing with the embossing folder, it does kind of pop in a bit like a puzzle piece which is really helpful, but you can use these stencils on their own. You don't necessarily have to use them with the embossing folder if you didn't want to, but I really love the texture that the embossing folder gives. I'm then going in with the next shade of the ink. I do dab off a little bit of the ink. That's honestly just something that I've got into the habit of doing. <laughs> because I don't always want like a really dark coverage. In this instance, I actually do want a really dark coverage. So you can see that I'm going over this a few different times. As the ink dries, it does lighten up slightly. So I want to make sure that there's a nice contrast between the different layers. So I'm just peeling off that satin masking tape and then I can add on the last layer of the stencils. So just keeping that in place. And then at this point, I realized that I didn't remove the ink off of that satin masking tape. I would definitely recommend to do that. You can reuse that masking tape multiple times, but there was ink on it. So my thumb is now green, but that's absolutely fine. It did wash off quite easily. So I'm now going in with the darkest shades and you can see here that it really is quite dark. But like I said, when the ink dries, it does lighten up slightly. But I really love the contrast between the three different layers of colour and the three different layers of trees. So I'm just going to pop that tag off and you can see they're really pretty tree layers and you can see that some of those trees have a really nice texture to them as well thanks to that embossing folder. 
So next I wanted to do kind of like a non-traditional colour. So the greens obviously are more traditional for trees, but I wanted to do something a little bit different and I thought blues would look really pretty, especially with more of like a snowy frosty look. So for this one I'm using the Blue Mountains Fresh Dye Inks and this one I'm actually using the three lightest. So I'm starting off with the lightest shade here, adding that down like I did with the green colours. I'm then going in with the second layer of the stencils and again I'm trying to make sure that I get a really nice coverage of this ink. So I do just go over it a few times and then for the last layer I'm using the darkest colour and again this is really very dark but I really love the kind of drama <laughs> to the darkness and the like I said difference between the different shades. So I can lift off that stencil and then I can lift off the tag from the background as well my scrap paper there and I've got some really pretty tags but they are a little bit flat so I do want to add some added detail onto them and I wanted to kind of make it look like they were snowy trees so I'm taking the pure white spray to start with and I thought that I would just splatter on some of the spray with the nozzle I did end up getting quite large drops though I did want some variation in the size of drops but I didn't want them to be all that big so I'm just using that nozzle to take some of the spray and pop it on a non-stick craft sheet and then I'm going to pick up the spray with a brush and then as you can see when I splatter that on I'm getting a lot smaller droplets but I do go back in with the nozzle and just add a few extra larger drops after that as well. As the ink underneath is still a little bit wet, some of the drops are kind of absorbing into the ink. So I am making sure that I add quite a bit on top just to get that snowy effect. And then I decided that I wanted a little bit of sparkle, so I'm going to use the Iridescent Shimmer ink. This is the spray as well and this time I am just going to use the nozzle because it doesn't matter if I get larger droplets. I didn't want to spray the whole tag mainly because I am going to stamp a sentiment but also this is just like regular cardstock and I didn't want to get it too wet. But I think that would look really pretty as well. But I was going for more of like a snowy look. So my tags, I did leave them to dry for a little while. Ordinarily, if I wasn't filming, I would leave them for some time. But unfortunately, I didn't have that uh, luxury of time. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to be really careful not to smudge that um, kind of snow that I've added on top. But I do want to add a sentiment. So I'm taking the sentiments from the Mistletoe Wreath Stamp Set and I'm just popping them down to see if they're going to fit where I want Want them to fit and I really love these tiny little sentiments and they're going to work perfectly for these tags. So I've taken the sentiment for this one that says happy holidays. I wasn't sure if I would use the tis the season but I decided to use that for the blue tag. I have added a layer of plastic over the tag. I want to stamp onto that first so that I can see if my sentiment is going to be straight and if it's going to be where I want it to be and if it looks nice. So I like to stamp if I'm di stamping directly onto a card or a tag. I like to use that plastic. As you can see here, that ink spray is definitely not dry yet. So I did pick up some of it on that sheet. So I do make sure that I do clean that quite well before I use it again. So now I can stamp the sentiment down onto the tag with obsidian pigment ink. And I'm pressing really lightly because this sentiment is absolutely tiny, but it fits into that gap really nicely. So I'm going to do the same thing for the blue tag and this time I'm using that tis the season sentiment. I did set this both of these tags to dry for about five minutes. Again, they're still not completely dry, so I'm going to be careful as I adhere another tag onto the back of these. I like to do that just so that the back is really nice and clean, somewhere for me to write a personal message. So I've added some glue tape onto the back of the other tag, and then I'm popping this one on top. And I'm being careful not to press my fingers where the ink is. So I'm just trying to line them up as best as possible to start with at the top and then I'm going to take some 
kind of scrap paper and just place that over the top so that I can really press them down without getting my fingers in them. At this point they had pretty much dried which was quite helpful. Then to finish off the tags I am going to add some twine through the top. So I've taken some black twine, I'm feeding that through the top of the tag and then I'm going to tie it in a bow at the front. I'd love to hear your thoughts on if you make gift tags for presents that you might give during the holiday season. I do always try and make my own gift tags, it doesn't always work every year but I do really enjoy making them. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on whether you like the traditional colour scheme or you prefer the non-traditional colour scheme. I think the green trees obviously do work really well since trees are usually green but for some reason I do gravitate more towards the blue tag. I think it's really pretty with the kind of frosty look. Looks a bit more kind of wintry I suppose rather than necessarily holiday. So that's really great because there's lots of different options to be able to send these tags to someone. I really love the slight iridescent shimmer on the trees and then also that white splatter that gives it that really frosty look. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar on YouTube and also over on the Altenew blog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hello crafters, Jen here. For more tips, techniques, tutorials, and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, subscribe to Altenew's YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching.